Good morning, Redemption City Church. We trust you've had a great week, and uh, we just want to say thank you as a leadership, as a church, for rallying together with us as we put out that email and text to us as a church to say, hey, we really need to come together on this. It was amazing to hear the responses, the messages that went out, and the prayers that just bonded together as we saw TK and Sandy really turn a corner that night as we as a church rallied together. And we trust that, you know, those times of adversity sometimes teach us more than the times that are easy. Adversity helps us to realize we need to stand together. We truly need to partner. And it's an interesting thing that at this moment we're going through a series out of Philippians on partnership. And God calls us to partner together to see our family and friends come through and uh, be recovering so quickly and so well. And we did want to let you know that TK and Sandy are doing so much better. Thank you for the food. Thank you for the calls. Thank you for the messages on their behalf. We really do appreciate it. Thank you for loving one another. Others in the life of the church have been sick and dealing with things, and we have just seen the outpouring of love. And please let that become who we are regularly, not just in an emergency, but all the time, known for our love for one another, known for the love of those around us. That is true and genuine partnership as we do life together. Things that are coming up on the 8th, uh, the men will be getting together May 8th, a Saturday morning at 9 a.m. We're going to head up and take a nice hike together, uh, sweat a little bit, which isn't bad for us, but also get up there and worship, open up God's word, pray together, and really hear what God's heart is for us as men in this season and in the seasons ahead. It's a key time. Please come and invite friends, invite people who aren't churchgoers. It's not meant to be a churchy occasion. It's meant to be a gathering of men and just hearing God's voice, which would be tremendous certainly for us, but also for the unsaved. Also, just again, to give you the opportunity to give, it is a privilege as God blesses and provides for us, and He truly is our provider, to be able to give back to Him the little that He asks of us, a tithe, an offering to see His kingdom advancing. Doesn't need our money, but He calls us to make sure it's not holding on to us, so we give. So again, the details are up. Feel free to give. If you have questions about it, please reach out. We'd love to just walk anyone through what that means and the purpose of it. Also, if you are sick or if you're in a situation, we want to be the church again that is connected, not through just meetings, but through true relationship. So please reach out, whether it's via social media or email or give us a call. Let us know where you're at. If you need prayer for something, direction for something, maybe there's a, a big decision on the front and you just want some perspective. That's part of what partnership is, leadership and the church. So please reach out. Have a great week. Open up your Bibles. Get yourselves ready because Tim Heil is going to share with us this morning out of the book of Philippians, continuing us on in the, the Partnership in the Gospel series. So get your hearts ready, your minds ready, and let's dive in. Have a great week. We look forward to seeing you in person very soon. Take care. Well, welcome, RCC. So glad to be here with you. Uh, obviously not the ideal circumstance that we would want, but we certainly thank you for your prayers, uh, definitely for those who are you know, dealing with COVID, dealing with sickness. Um, the good thing is that we hear that uh, most, if not all, are on the mend, and we certainly hope to see you next week. Uh, we're super excited about that. Heck, you know, we heard some, some of the houses were so sick that even the chimney got the flu. So, uh, you know, <laughs> I'm just kidding, but, but hey, we're really thankful for your prayers. And uh, we're going to continue uh, this series on Philippians, our partnership in the gospel. So real quick, just Lord, we thank you for this time. Holy Spirit, we just welcome you. Would you just uh, uh, use the words that I speak to, to speak to hearts? We pray for open hearts, open minds, open ears, open eyes to receive all that you have in Jesus' name. You know, I once heard a story about a man named Daniel Manville. He was, he was in prison. Um, on manslaughter, actually. He was three and a half years in prison. And while he was in prison, he decided that he was going to study law. So he studied during that, and later on, after he got it, he continued his studies, and he passed the bar exam, and then he became a lawyer, started to uh, represent prisoners and prison guards in his practice, and uh, be became quite a success. And now he's, he's, uh, he's a university professor uh, at, a, at a school in Michigan. And, you know, he made quite a bit of himself after prison. Uh, another story I heard was uh, a gentleman that was in prison for seven years on drug charges. And after he got out, he turned his life around. He became a, 
a civic leader. He became a real estate agent, a philanthropist. He actually gave quite a bit of money, but he had great accomplishments after prison. And, you know, what makes Paul unique in, in this thing of Philippians or what makes Paul unique in general is that he didn't wait till he was out of prison to do something uh, special, to accomplish something great. He actually did a lot while he was in prison. And in fact, he wrote four letters. Um, he wrote Ephesians and then what the second letter that we're going to study here uh, a bit, Philippians, and then Colossians, and then, then Philemon. But, you know, God allowed him to be in prison to write these letters and further the gospel. And, uh, you know, many accomplished things after prison, but it was just so unique that Paul accomplished uh, so much while he was in prison. And, and he'll, he talks about in Philippians how he furthered the gospel. He used those chains to further the gospel. And, of course, there's lots of context and history, uh, too much to really go into in terms of Philippians. Um, but I just challenge you to read through it. Um, just like we all have and, and gotten stirred by it. But uh, just real quick on some of the history, uh, Philippi was a, was a colony in Rome. In fact, it was the first area in Europe that received the gospel uh, through Paul's second missionary journey with Silas. And uh, he had no plans to go to Philippi, actually. Uh, he was trying to visit people from his first journey. He tried to go into Asia, but then the Holy Spirit said no. So he came from the east. He tried to go north, south. He got a big no from the Holy Spirit. And isn't that interesting that, um, and isn't it great that the steps of the righteous are ordered by the Lord? You know, the Lord had a plan, both the steps and the stops. You know, sometimes the Lord says go, and sometimes the Lord says no. And uh, the no is just as important as the go. And of course, just listening to the Holy Spirit. But the, the Philippi church was started uh, by, as we know, by, by Lydia and a few other converts and, and uh, all of that. So, uh, you know, the book wasn't really written to address bad doctrine or bad conduct, although there's some hints of some things, uh, but it's really an encouraging letter to um, just explore uh, the Christian life. And Chris, in, in, uh, a couple weeks ago, mentioned it was known as the Book of Joy. And isn't it interesting that he uses the word joy 16 times in Philippians by a guy who's in prison? Isn't that interesting? And definitely there's a difference between joy and happiness. Of course, we all know um, joy is a permanent state of heart. Uh, it's a choice uh, most of the time, if not all the time. You know, happiness is, is more of a feeling. It's based on happenings. But, but Paul wrote about joy throughout Philippians. And he wrote them while he was in prison. And so what's interesting is nothing was holding Paul back from fulfilling the will of God. And it shows that even the worst of circumstances might be the best possible place of ministry. And uh, while it's not as severe, how pertinent is that for the church today? So just reading Philippians 1, uh, starting in verse 12. Now I want you to know, brothers and sisters... That what has happened to me has actually served to advance the gospel. As a result, it's become clear throughout the whole place or throughout the whole palace guard and to everyone else that I'm in chains for Christ. And because of my chains, most of the brothers and sisters have become confident in the Lord and dare to proclaim the gospel without fear. And again, it's interesting that he's in prison, but yet the whole palace guard knows his chains are are in Christ or for Christ. And the palace guard, that's, um, that's a big deal. Uh, that's kind of like the secret service for the president. It was in, in the palace. So he was spending time with these palace guards and they knew who he was. And I believe he, he was converting them as well. And um, so he used that time. He didn't let anything stop him from sharing the gospel. And again, we're talking about our partnership in the gospel. So Kind of correlating it today, whatever's going down or going on with lockdown, it shouldn't prevent us from, from sharing the gospel. Uh, just, a, just a quick story. Um, my wife and I are in a group called Transform, and we uh, use electronic dance music to reach people for, for, the, for the kingdom, for the gospel. And as we, we started a radio show called Movement Radio, 
And what was interesting was when COVID hit and the lockdown happened, we were kind of wondering, well, what are we going to do? And um, at the time we were doing the radio show, it was a little, a little iffy. We were kind of passe about it, but we, we determined like, okay, we're going to, this is what we have in our hands now, and we're going we're gonna to use it now. Uh, and of course, you know, many churches as well has, has uh, had to go online and do various things, but we used it. We used the lockdown to just focus in on doing that. And, uh, you know, some numbers started coming out. We realized, because we, we share the gospel uh, on every show. And so we realized just through listenership and different things that tens of thousands of people have heard the gospel, like going through their ears. Uh, and so, again, lockdown shouldn't prevent us from fulfilling our partnership in the gospel. And of course, when churches had to go online from the pandemic, uh, you know, everyone, everyone was forced to do something. We, we, uh, we grinded through it as well as, as Redemption City Church, but we did it because of our partnership in the gospel. We knew our calling. We knew our partnership in the gospel. We even started prayer meetings online. And, and again, uh, in those prayer meetings, we began praying specifically for people to come to know Jesus. And we began to hear testimonies of how um, just in, even in lockdown, that people were re- able to reach out to various people specifically and individually and, and uh, be able to share the love of Jesus with them. So Paul's joy in this whole thing was, you know, he's talking about my joy is in the partnership of your partnership in the gospel. You know, God has a family business and we're involved in that business as part of his family. We're, we're responsible for expanding his business, for growing the family business, if you will. We have a mandate, as we've, we've talked about many times, we have a mandate to spread the gospel. Uh, Matthew 28, Therefore go make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you, and surely I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. So we have this mandate to share the to share the gospel to understand our partnership in the gospel but we have that promise that he's with us there to the very end of the age and and who are we to not share it for what he's done for us you know we have the hope he is the way the truth and the life that's jesus there's there's millions of people that don't know jesus they're they're suffering they're dying they're uh, they're suffering from depression or addiction uh, and even illness uh, there's even millions of prodigals, people who knew, know Jesus or knew Jesus but are running from Him. There's just so many people that need to hear the gospel again. And we have a partnership together in the gospel. You know, it's not just the preacher's job. It's not the pastor's job. It's, it's not um, the religious leader's job. It's all of our job to get the gospel out together. And, and if we just understood the bigness of what we're called to, uh, as, a, as a family, expanding God's family business, uh, getting His gospel out. So again, just whatever lockdown has been going on, and we're, we're in it right now, we're doing it right now, but there should be nothing that prevents us from getting the gospel out. And uh, I believe there's a boldness that's rising up in the church. And, uh, you know, I I don't know that the church is fully there yet, that from what I'm envisioning, but clearly in our society, there, there are lines being drawn, and it's up to God's people to, to stand up and to proclaim the name of Jesus. Uh, when we first started the series, Tyron uh, Priest, he, he mentioned three key partnerships. You know, we're in partnership with God in our relationship with God. We're in partnership together, our church body. Uh, and we're also in partnership with the gospel, joyfully working together in the gospel. And Philippians 1.5, again, I thank God because of your partnership in the gospel. You know, and I, I just started to think, how do we partner? You know, how do we, how do we partner with each other in the gospel? And, uh, you know, we're in this together. And a lot of this happens through relationship. You know, we find out um, what people do, what their giftings are. You know, each person has giftings and, and, and a platform. Um, they have resources. They have different things, you know, but we should all be coming together to, to use those things for God's glory. And, and, and in some sense, it's kind of like what Christian networking should be. It's not about expanding, you know, this 
little segment of ministry here or or how can I get ahead of this and that within like a ministry context, but it's really how can we work together to expand the kingdom? That's what Christian networking is really all about. And so um, again, kingdom projects come out of kingdom partnerships. And again, our partnership is much bigger than a Sunday morning. It's every day. It's out there. And I love when Andrew, um, when, he, when he stepped, when, when Tyron was talking, he mentioned the Pareto principle, which is the 80-20 rule. And usually it's, you know, 20% of the people do 80% of the work or 20% of um, people who, who give, uh, give 80% of, of the funds, etc. That's kind of the rule. And I stand by that rule. I think that, that actually that rule applies across life no matter what you look at. You can split it into 80-20. And if I'm wrong, you can come challenge me. But I'll, uh, I, I, I truly believe the 80-20 rule is just a huge principle across the board. Anyway, what am I getting at? What if it was flipped? What if it was 80-20? What if it was 100? What if we were all bought into this thing, this partnership of the gospel? Uh, I think the Lord would be coming soon because we would be getting the gospel to every nation, tribe, and tongue. And so just think about that. You know, what are we doing? Um, partnership, you know, sometimes comes through just a common purpose. Now, I think, I think partnership through friendship and relationship is ideal, but sometimes it just starts with a common purpose common purpose. It's kind of like when you um, meet someone for the first time, you have a few things in common and, and uh, you start to hang out a little bit, but then you develop your relationship over time. Sometimes that happens. But again, coming back to the story of, of Transform way back in the day, um, we used to do outreaches to uh, the Denver nightlife scene and, and different things using dance music. And man, we were just a bunch of guys that a couple of us knew each other, but some of us didn't know each other that well. We just had a common purpose, and that was, what can we do for Jesus? And, and so we gathered together. We really had no clue what we were doing, but at the same time, we just went for it. We didn't, we didn't care. We just started it. And then, of course, that relationship developed over time, and now we're just close friends. And it's, it's like, as TK might say, you know, doing ministry with our mates. You know, that's that's how, uh, that's how we try to function here, even just as an eldership team, is just ministry with our mates, um, using a friendship and a common bond of, of the gospel. Um, other ways of partnership is through financial partnership. I used to work for uh, a company that would donate um, over half their profits, and I'm talking millions of dollars, to missions. And they would also do uh, a campaign every year where they would partner with their customers to support uh, missions in India and people would give and uh, they would come together and, and the owners would match the giving. Uh, and it was just a fantastic time, but it drew people together to help people understand that we're all in this together. Um, and yeah, so that, that's what happened and that was great. So, you know, again, if, it, if it's not started in relationship right away, um, I think that's the ideal, just starting something in, rela in relationship together. But sometimes it's common purpose, and that's, and that's okay. But again, it's, it's with that common bond of getting the gospel out there. Philippians 1.27, striving together as one for the faith of the gospel. And Philippians 2.2, 2, make my, you make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and one of mind, together as one. You know, we're stronger Together is when we're faster. Together is when we're just more powerful. Together, um, again, this quote from that Tyron mentioned: "If you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together." Uh, another statement: "Alone we can do so little. Together we can do so much." And coming together is a beginning. Keeping together is progress. But working together is success. Again, our togetherness, doing this together, understanding how we all work together in partnership. Um, you know, some of you, I think, have ideas um, to get the gospel out there, but maybe you felt you didn't have the resources of the people and all of that. And I would just encourage you to just begin praying for God to connect you with people within the church, maybe some without, uh, outside the church. Um, but, but again, that Christian networking that we're talking about, what can we do together to get the gospel out? And I think part of our partnership in the gospel is being bold. And I mentioned that earlier, uh, but we need to share it. It's time to be bold. 
It's time to be bold as a church. It's time to be bold as individuals for the gospel. And again, I think society is, is uh, maybe it's nudging us to that or pushing us to that. But um, there are definitely clear lines being drawn. And, and where are we to stand and proclaim the name of Jesus? Uh, again, Philippians 1, 12 through 14. Now, I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that what has happened to me has actually served to advance the gospel. So he's in prison, and he's saying it's served to advance the gospel. And as a result, it's become clear throughout the whole palace guard and to everyone else that I am in chains for Christ. And because of my chains, most of the brothers and sisters have become confident in the Lord and dare all the more to proclaim the gospel without fear. Uh, Philippians 1.27 Whatever happens, conduct yourselves in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. Then, whether I come and see you or only hear about you in my absence, I will know that you stand firm in one spirit, striving together as one for the faith of the gospel, without being frightened in any way by those who oppose you. This is a sign to them that they'll be destroyed, but that you will be saved and that by God. And I just love that, without being frightened in any way by those who oppose you. I mean, I just immediately started thinking of, um, honestly, social media. It, social media, uh, I, I check it, but I really don't post too much. I, I'm, I'm, I'm the guy that's like, I'll like a few things, and then I check who's on my birthday list. So if you guys are getting like happy birthdays from me, it's because Facebook told, you, told me. So that's the one thing I can thank fa Facebook for is reminding me whose birthday it is, and sometimes even some of my family members, so sorry about that. But... Um, you know, I think of social media and just like, sometimes you just feel like you want to say something, but you just know immediately that you're going to be pounded, you know, for whatever. And I, and, um, but now's the time to just boldly proclaim Jesus without fear. And I, it, it doesn't even have to be on social media. It could, it could be at the workplace. I was telling, um, our, our prayer online prayer group that, <clears throat> you know, normally I wouldn't have done this because I, I work for a fairly... Um, liberal company and and uh, you know that just comes with a lot of things and so uh, but there was just this one time I was in a meeting with just one other person <clears throat> and I knew he had a background in faith but he shared some things with me about his parents and uh, going through some health issues and um, I just felt the Holy Spirit just nudge me and just say you know go for it just do it and so I said well hey what's your name and he gave me the name and so I'm gonna I'm gonna pray for them. Is that okay? And it just became totally quiet. And I thought, oh boy, here we go. You know, this is they're gonna call HR. They're gonna say this religious nuts cramming cramming Jesus down their throat. And and it was quiet. And I just I said, you know, I used the excuse of like maybe a bad uh, not Zoom. We use uh, Teams, like a my bad connection on on the internet. Like, oh, are you there? Are you there? And, and he said, yes, and he just began to weep, and he said, I would love that. And I got to pray with him in our meeting, right there. I got to pray with him, and it was just because I felt the Lord just nudging me, saying, it's time, go for it. And, and I really believe um, my future interactions with him, I, I know there's going to be another one, and I, I know that there's going to be a time where I'm, I'm going to ask him about, have you accepted Jesus as your Savior, and we're going to go there. So... Um, this is challenging for me as well, but now's the time to be bold in the gospel, proclaiming the gospel without fear. Uh, when, when my family went to Virginia and North Carolina, uh, recently we were in Charlotte, we flew into Charlotte, <clears throat> and uh, we visited um, the Billy Graham Library. And if you don't know the story of um, Billy Graham, I just encourage you to, to check it out. You know, one of the one of the greatest evangelists of our time, if not of all time. Uh, maybe that's debatable, but, uh, you know, it was in, in Charlotte. We went through the library. And it was just so inspiring. His story is so inspiring. But he knew his call in the, in, and his partnership in the gospel. He knew the bigness of it. He knew that millions of lives were at stake. <clears throat> but he also knew the tools uh, and things to, to, reach, to reach the world. He knew the power of media. He knew the power of radio. He knew the power of TV um, to get the gospel out. He was one of the um, first 
really to really take hold of those kinds of things. He, you know, he did tent revivals in cities, um, and, and it's just so inspiring what he did. And he always, I, I just remember when he, when he would speak, he would always quote the Bible. He, he never said, you know, I think this or I think that. It was just the Bible says this and the Bible says that. And he just spoke truth in boldness. <clears throat> and I was watching this, um, this documentary, and again, I was just so inspired. Um, they showed various, you know, he was a pretty popular guy. <clears throat> and he was invited on a lot of talk shows, which I don't, I don't think you see that much today anymore. But, um, you know, they showed him, and I'm talking the big ones of the time, you know, for those of you that remember, you know, Johnny Carson, uh, David Letterman, Larry King, you know, some of these other guys that um, finished a while back or just recently finished, um, you know, so it'd be the equivalent of, you know, Jimmy Kimmel or, or some of these guys for, for you younger folks. But anyway, it was a big deal and it was mainstream TV <clears throat> and he never backed down. He boldly proclaimed the gospel and you could see smirks on some of these guys' face and he, he wouldn't bite, he wouldn't budge and he boldly proclaimed the gospel and I, I just love that. And uh, I just know there's more Billy Grahams out there. I know that there's more people like him out there and you could be the one. Um, there's more out there. And they actually estimate that more than three million people have given their life to Jesus as a result of his boldness for the gospel and what he did. Um, so yeah, just so, so inspiring. <clears throat> and in Philippians 3, you know, it talks about boasting in Christ. We want to know Christ and the power of His resurrection. We want, we want you to know Christ and the power of His resurrection. Boldness. We need it. Um, you know, in chapter 3, it, Paul reminds us to keep pressing on. And, and again, as, we, as we, we go for the gospel and we, we partner together to expand the gospel, um, there's challenges. There's, there's challenges, but Paul says... Keep pressing on. Keep running the race. Philippians 3, 13. One thing I do, forgetting what's behind and straining toward what's ahead, I press towards the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward, heavenward in Christ Jesus. Press toward, toward the goal. Keep pressing. I know it can get tired, but keep pressing. You know, the one thing I've learned is... Um, if you, want, if you want a miserable life, keep looking backwards. Keep, keep, keep looking back to the old. You know, the, the, the Bible says, um, the old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Uh, run the race. Look forward. Look ahead. Keep moving forward. Look at the big picture of what He's called you to. Don't grow weary in doing good. And realize that our citizenship is in heaven. And Paul goes on to say, Philippians 3, 19, but our citizenship is in heaven and we eagerly await a savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ, who by the power that enables him to subject all things to himself will transform our lowly bodies to be like his glorious body. Our citizenship is in heaven. Just did a little quick word study. That word citizenship there comes from the Greek word politumi, wonder what that sounds like. Politi politics, po political, pol politics. Yes, it's actually the Greek word that's similar to politics. And so he's saying our politics are in heaven. And it's just real interesting. You know, I, um, I'll come clean with you here. I'll, I'll lay it out there before you. Um, I'm not a Republican. I'm not a Democrat. I'm actually a registered independent. You know, next time you see me, don't, don't beat me up either way. Um, I don't place faith in either of those parties. I don't place uh, much faith in our government. What I am, though, is a, a theocrat. And my only hope is when Jesus comes back and rules the world. I, you know, I believe in policies. I'll vote based on policies. But our politics and our citizenship should be in heaven. And we're looking for the king to come back. So our citizenship is in heaven. As you're pressing on, as you're moving forward, even when it's tiring, know that your citizenship is in heaven and great is your reward. Uh, just a couple more things here. Uh, Paul goes on to say, 
he, he talks about uh, you know, what you're thinking. And I would use this phrase here, think about what you think about. Um, finally, brothers and sisters, this is chapter 4, whatever's true, whatever's noble, whatever's right, whatever's pure, whatever's lovely, whatever's admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. And whatever you've learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put into practice, and the God of peace will be with you. <clears throat> now, this is a whole other message. I mean, we could go on about this, but we need to start thinking about what we are thinking about. What are we dwelling on? Um, you know, I've heard someone say, my thoughts control my life, but I can control my thoughts. You know, your thoughts control your feelings. If you're feeling a certain way, it's probably because you're thinking a certain way. Good thoughts bear good fruit. Bad thoughts bear bad fruit. I've also heard it say, if you can get someone to think about something long enough to believe it, then you can get them to do something about it in terms of action. Uh, Proverbs 4.23, be careful what you think about because your thoughts run your life. Psalm 42, 6, my heart is breaking. Now again, he's talking about his feelings here. My heart is breaking. So I turn my thoughts towards God. See, he's, he, he recognizes the emotion, but he also recognizes what am I thinking about? I'm going to put my thoughts on God, whatever's pure, whatever's uh, noble, whatever's right. Even in Jonah when I lost all hope, this is Jonah 2, 7. When I lost all hope, I turned my thoughts once more to God. Think about what you're thinking about. There are so many issues in the world going on right now um, that we can get quickly. We can quickly get negative about. And, and frankly, um, just depending on what web, news website you go to, um, it'll be completely inflammatory um, towards whatever position um, that you hold or don't. And uh, we do have issues we need to address, but we also need to start highlighting the things that are noble and pure and virtuous. Uh, think on these things and, and do what we see the Father doing. And why do I say all this? Because in our partnership in the gospel, I'll just be very frank here, no one wants to be around a negative and depressed person. It's just the reality of it. Who's going to receive the gospel from someone who's hopeless, who's down in the dumps? We need to be ready to share the hope that's within us, and that's Jesus. And that's why we need to think about what we're thinking. What are you dwelling on? What are we dwelling on? <clears throat> and finally, in our, in our partnership, in, in helping us with our partnership in the gospel, Paul encourages us to be content. He says, I've learned to be content whatever the circumstances. I know that what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I've learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want, in lockdown or not. But no, he ends by saying, I can do all things. In any of those situations, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Whether living in plenty or want, well-fed or hungry, in this partnership together, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. He's our strength. He's our hope. And, uh, you know, I'll just ask you, are you content? You know, 100, they say 100 years ago, Americans could identify 70 needs, 70, 70 needs. They could just list what they think their needs are, and it's about 70. That was about 100 years ago. I was kind of surprised by that, actually. I wondered if I could even think of that many things. I'm, I'm just like, well, food, clothes, maybe internet. <laughs> I have a car, I guess. Um, <clears throat> but 70 needs. They say today Americans can identify 500 needs. Now, are those legitimate needs or not? I, I don't know. I don't have the list in front of me. Um, but I know that clearly we, um, we think we need more today. And my question is, are you content? Contentment does not come from what you have. It comes from whom we have or who we have. 
And, and that's Jesus. That's where our contentment comes from. Are you content? Are you content enough to get on with the mandate of the gospel? Or are we still chasing things? Are we still chasing possessions or money or status? Uh, and it's not a bad thing to have money um, because I know people with money that use it in partnership with the gospel. But it's about, are you content? You know, just wrapping up here, you know, ultimately the question is, is do you understand your partnership in the gospel? Do you see the big picture? Uh, who are you partnering with? Uh, hopefully it's RCC, or, or if, if you're watching this, you don't go to RCC, uh, maybe it's your local church. Um, you know, what else are your partnerships? What are they for? How are you partnering your gifts and talents and finances, uh, pu pulling them together for the sake of the gospel? What's the end game? You know, we have people in business, art, uh, music, um, you know, fashion, healthcare, various things. Um, how are we pulling these things together to advance the gospel? And collectively as a body, you know, I was just reminded of Hebrews 10, 24, let us consider how we may spur on one another towards love and good deeds. This is our this is our partnership in the gospel. Let's spur each other on in love and good deeds. Um, yeah, I'd just like to pray um, as, as we're thinking about this. Lord, just want to uh, thank you for this time. Thank you for the people watching um, here locally and maybe even around the world. <clears throat> as we consider our, our partnership in, in the gospel, in your gospel, in your family business, um, Lord, would you... Um, just expand our vision, expand our eyes. Lord, help us to understand the giftings and the callings and the resources you've given us. But Lord, how can we um, partner together to proclaim your gospel boldly, Lord? Uh, would you just, by your Holy Spirit, just quicken that within us individually, Lord, and even corporately as a church? <clears throat> but I also want to um, give you a chance, if, if you don't know Jesus... Would you like to partner with God for the first time? You know, um, the Bible says in John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son, that whoever believes in Him will not perish, but have everlasting life. It also goes on to say that, For God didn't send His Son to condemn the world, but that the world through Him would be saved. Uh, the Bible says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Um, for all have fallen short of the glory of God. No one, we're all no different. We all came from a place of, uh, of sin and running from God. <clears throat> and if, if that's you, today's your day, tonight's your night, wherever you are, I just want to encourage you. I just want to pray for you. You can secure your place in heaven today, tonight, by trusting in Jesus, by believing that Jesus came. He lived a, a sinless life. But he, he came knowing that he was going to be a sacrifice for our sin. He took our sin upon himself. He died. And three days later, he rose again. And one day he's coming back. And we're looking for him because our citizenship is in heaven. And we cannot wait to see him again. And I just want to pray for you, Lord, if there's anyone here um, that is ready to come to know you, um, we, just, we just pray for them right now. I just ask you to pray with me. Uh, Lord Jesus, thank you for... Uh, taking my sin on the cross. Lord, I um, acknowledge that uh, my sin is, is worthy of death, that my sin is worthy of an eternity in hell. But Lord, I'm ready to partner with you. I'm ready to partner in your gospel. Um, I'm ready to take advantage of what you did on the cross and, and secure my place and my citizenship in heaven. And... Uh, Lord, just thank you for taking my sin away. And we thank you in Jesus' name. If you said that today, uh, there's, a, there's a huge party going on in heaven right now. Uh, people are rejoicing. Um, if you did do that, please reach out to us. Um, you can go to our website, uh, redemptioncitychurch.com. Uh, connect with us. We'd love to give you a call back, send you an email. You can also um, uh, Hit us on the socials, DM us on the socials if you, if you wish. Just let us know if you made that commitment. 
um, I, I or one of the elders personally will get back to you. Um, we'd just love to get to know you, but just wanted to give that opportunity. And for those who already know Jesus, who already know their citizenship is in heaven, let's continue to press on towards love and good deeds uh, and, and uh, press ahead with our partnership together in the gospel. God bless you guys. Join our song.